Christopher Hill is the former U.S. ambassador to Iraq and the dean of the Corbell School of International Studies at Denver University. He joins us to talk more about the situation. Now, uh, Ambassador Hill, uh, I, I want to talk about, uh, Andrea used the phrase, an erratic figure to describe uh, President Karzai, particularly after his comments about the U.S. alleged collusion with the Taliban that he now says was a misunderstanding. Uh, can the U.S. trust Karzai after the sort of behavior he has exhibited over the last three and a half weeks? Well, I think we know Karzai pretty well. We've dealt with him for a long time, and I think uh, Secretary Kerry in particular, I think, has a kind of personal relationship with him. But I think with respect to public statements, from our perspective, Karzai is going to be erratic and continue to be erratic. Much of what he says really is designed for domestic Afghan audiences. And I must say, from the point of view of our audiences, from the point of view of the U.S., it's often very tough to take. But I don't see that changing. I mean, this has gone on for quite some time. And, Ambassador, just to uh, further uh, on that point, it would seem that this is some of what Karzai says here is simply about Hamid Karzai's politics in Afghanistan and not meant sort of in the diplo diplomatic context for which many of us are taking it. Am I reading you right? That's right, but uh, obviously it's hard to segment audiences these right. days. So uh, we hear the same thing they hear, but we take it kind of differently. Uh, now, I have a question. Andrea mentioned uh, the prisons. The U.S. has ceded uh, control of the last detention facility in Afghanistan. G given what you, the sort of bifurcated nature of what uh, President Karzai sometimes says, can we trust Afghanistan not to release some of the, the m sort of the most dangerous prisoners that are now in the prisons that we have turned over, that we have ceded control of? Boy, we went through the same type of drill with the with the Iraqis, where uh, you know they they release prisoners for different reasons than we release prisoners, and often it's simply the prisoner's family has some in with somebody. So this is a tough one, and uh, I suspect we're going to have a lot of disappointments ahead. These things happen all the time. Now, uh, one last thing: personal relationships. Much has been made of John Kerry's relationship with Hamid Karzai prior that that preceded him being named Secretary of State. Uh, I, how much do we, as and I, as an amateur in, in in diplomacy, do we under, over, or rightly rate the importance of personal relationships, uh, Kerry, Karzai, others, in being able to sort of move the debate in ways that we believe it is beneficial for our country to do so? I think uh, it's on the whole kind of under uh, appreciated. The fact that you can get someone to do something that person wouldn't otherwise want to do because that person wants to keep the relationship with you is important. And I think too often, especially in the public dis discussion in the United States about these diplomatic relations, you know, if we listen to what people in the U.S. always said, it's usually wagging a finger at someone and publicly humiliating the person. And just as in one's private life or, life or business life, that often doesn't work. So I think it is much preferable to try to get close and therefore get influential. And I think John Kerry has it right in this regard. Ambassador Christopher Hill, with a good reminder that in your personal life, in politics and in diplomacy, relationships always matter. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you.